What is up YouTube Moderate Mods and today I'm back and I'm doing the first mod I've ever done on the, uh, on the vet today actually. So today we're going to be installing the LED third brake light strip that you've seen in the thumbnail and that maybe you've seen around. Um, this is actually a very cheap mod and looks surprisingly good. So I'm going to be testing it out and I'm going to be taking you guys step by step by step on how to do this. I'm going to break it down as simple as I can. And this goes for any car. This is just getting done on the vet today, but it's going to be the same process, the same idea if you're doing it on any car. And for all my 200 guys, just again, any car, I'll take it step by step. And you already know what to do, guys. If you ever have any questions or any concerns, please hit me up on the comments, hit me up on IG, and I'm going to help you guys out. But let me break it down now. Let me show you what I, guys, what I got in the package today, guys. And let's get right into the install. Enjoy. Okay, guys. So... Here's the strip. This is the 93 milli or centimeter one, um, the, so the smaller one. Uh, it actually fits perfectly with the vet. So this is the size I'm using with this one. You guys can measure it out and see what size you need. It's going to be obviously the same install. Um, so that comes in the pack as well as this little ballast with all the wires and the clip that clips into the um, LED itself. So here's a little diagram, and I'm going to break down what each of these mean. Starting at the bottom here. Black is going to be your ground. Um, so that's going to get connected into a ground wire. You can run a wire all the way to your battery if you'd like, or you can use a ground in your um, car. I'm going to be doing it as simple as I can for you guys. So what I'm going to do is, just so you guys can understand, I'm going to probably run a positive and a ground wire from my battery to the back of my car. But getting into where the positive one is, that's going to be your red. So your red is your positive wire, which... Those two, red and black, are going to go to an all-time ground and an all-time uh, positive. So they're not going to be doing any lighting functionality. All they're going to be doing is powering the ballast and then getting into the other colors. So you have the yellow and red and the yellow and, or I don't know what the YR and the YL means, but pretty much where they're lined up at is going to be your right turn signal and your left turn signal positives. So those are going to go to the positive wire for your turn signals. Um, again, it's going to be very simple to find these, and I'm going to break it down on how to find those. Next is your brake V. So brake positive, which is going to be when you press the brake, that wire that lights up the lights brighter. So that's going to make the strip actually pop when it lights up. So that's going to be that wire. And then the green wire is the all time brake lights so the light that turns um on when you in you know turn on your brake lights in a sense so when you turn on your lights for nighttime that wire is going to be going to the positive for that so that way this strip will turn on run nicely and then when you press your brake that will engage the white wire which will then flash and um, do what it's supposed to do so pretty simple guys um it doesn't come with any instructions just a little coupon as well as a adhesion adhesion promoter can't speak and um that's pretty much it but all the instructions are pretty much right there there's not much else they can tell you you got to know how to wire things up so that's why you're watching this video so i'm going to break it down again um go ahead and grab yourself some speaker wire as well i just grabbed some walmart 14 gauge speaker wire um it's thicker than that so that's fine as long as you're going thicker you're okay just to you know hold continuity and whatnot but that you don't want to go much thicker than that because then you're going to get into you know hard to hide wires and whatnot so i just grabbed 50 feet uh, i needed some around the house and garage anyway so that's going to come in handy and that's pretty much all you're going to need right there just out of your thing is the speaker wire and possibly some wire cutters and then everything else comes with the kit so we're going to go ahead and first thing we're going to do is go to the back of the car and see where we're going to actually line this thing up at all right guys so now we're at the back of the car and pretty much as you can see, this is how my trunk layout is and how all that C6s are. So I'm gonna be doing mine right here. So if you actually look at the strip itself, on the red, there is the peel back, you know, sticky tape that it comes with, and it's gonna set up like that. So basically, I'm gonna be putting mine right here, up in the top part, like that. I'm gonna obviously line it up better, but you always wanna fit it first, see where you're gonna put it. I'm gonna be putting mine right there. And then I'm gonna run the wires down through, probably 
you know, either loop them up in here or zip tie them to this little strut bar here and just bring them down through and run them in and find my uh, power sources there. So that right there is where I'm gonna mark it up at. I'm gonna be actually putting it up last. That's the last thing I'm gonna do. So the next step here is to access um, your brake light. You pretty much can do most of all the powering through one side other than the opposite side's turn signal. So that's a good thing to, you know, look forward to. It's not gonna be much of tearing out both. But so in my case, since I'm doing that and the power source is coming from this side, most of you are probably going to be using your right uh, brake as all the power other than the left turn signal. So I'm gonna be running mine there, but next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the back and get to the power supply on the brake light on this Corvette. Okay guys, like I said, I'll be working on this side. So I got my Corvette back panel opened here. All I did was is there's a little pull push pin here that you just pull out and then you have the hook for your, um, your cargo net. You just twist this off and then you just pry back and your carpet linering and fabric should all just pull out and pull back. And then you have everything exposed here. And coming down to take out the tail light is a T15 screw, just one there. You unscrew it and then you can pull the little tab towards you and a light comes right out. You just unclip it and boom, there it is. And now I have exposed um, power wire here. So, now the next step is to test and see which wires are which guys. So since I have three here and I have my pins exposed, what I'm going to need to do is, um, you know, just test these pins with, you know, you can use your tester or I'm just going to use the wires itself and just push in there and see which, what lights up what. So I'm going to find out what these are. But before I do this guys, like I was saying earlier, we're gonna have to run the power and constant power and the ground to this as well. So grounding out, if you want, you can find somewhere in the frame to screw down to, or you can just run off the battery. I'm just going to run off the battery just because I have the speaker wire and it's just already connected. So there's no point to just rip a whole long strip off. I'll just use the other side of it and um, get that connected. So go ahead, get your speaker wire, get it connected to the positive and negative of your battery get it ran back here and then bounce back up and unpause it and we'll go into testing. Okay guys, so now that you got your wire ran from your battery, take your positive and your negative, your red and black, connect them where they are and then we're gonna go into the testing procedure. Okay guys, so now I am here and I have my positives connected and my wires snipped. So right now I'm going to be looking for the green wire which is just the running brake light. So I have my thing here, my pin, and I'm just gonna take my wire through and I'm gonna hit it. So it looks like there, the middle pin on this one, which is a gray wire, is gonna be my running brake light like that. So there it is, that light lights up. Now the next step is going to try and find the wire that engages the um, turn signals. So unfortunately I had to turn the car on and as you've seen, it's very loud. So I couldn't talk over my loud exhaust and it running to find out what it was. But on the vet here, the middle one is gonna be your constant. So just when you turn the lights on and then the far right one, if you're looking at it like with the squares pointing up is gonna be the turn signal for the right side. So those are there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna splice right into those wires. I'm gonna splice my green into the middle one and I'm gonna splice my turn signal into the green one and that side is done. And then next with white, what I had to do was, is actually right here, I have a third brake light. Let me check a little bit. My third little brake light right there. So what, what I did was I took out the harness for it, which is over here and 
I used that as the power for it. So I found which one was the power. It's got a power and a ground going to it. I found which one that was and I wired my white to that one. Another tip guys when you're doing this is always make sure when you are testing to find which is which, do it safely. Secondly, when you are going to wire things in, make sure, God, I've learned this the hard way many times, that you run your wires through before you begin to wire. Because then you might have to unwire something and run it through. So I ran mine through and got it wired up. So now I'm just going to clip that back in and it's good to go. Obviously, I tested beforehand. I pushed my brake. Again, the car had to be running for that. So it was just something that I had to do, um, you know, with no sound or visuals on that part. But that's done. Now, all I have left is the other turn signal. And that is just going to have to be bridge from this side with um, some more speaker wire, obviously, over there and find which one is the turn signal. And I'll turn my car back on and test and then everything will be spliced in. So once I get those spliced in, I'll come back to you guys. And again, you can buy some um, splicing clips that um, I pictured right here, um, which are pretty simple, which I used. Um, a lot of the times though, you wanna use those in closed areas that won't be exposed to moisture because moisture can corrode them out pretty bad. Um, so you can use those. If it's inside your trunk and cavity, you should be good. You won't have to worry about that. Or you can cut and splice, whatever floats your boat. But go ahead and get all your wires spliced in and then I'll come back in and I'll explain everything that I have connected. Um, then we'll go ahead and go for the um, stick on part. All right guys, so now I have everything wired in. Um, again, I'm just going to show you what I did here. So here is the left turn signal. I spliced in, bridged all the way over to the yellow one here. And here is my right turn signal as well as the constant. So when my brake lights turn on or when my tail lights turn on, the um, strip will light up a dimmed red. And then going over here to my spoiler light, I just bridged in to the white wire. So when I push my brake, it really emits it and it just brightens it up more. So I did test it, everything is good, everything's spliced in. Um, and then going over here, my red and my black going from my battery are connected as well. So everything is in now guys. And on the C6 here, there's a little booty that lets the wires go in through. I just punctured through, ran that through, and I'm gonna click that back in place and then all my wires will be in the back area and i'll be able to put everything back together guys so just again check all your wires test 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 before you splice um and that's the only way you'll get it done without having to do multiple reruns and multiple things it's really simple guys just take your time um i did this without a partner it'd be way easier with a person so you don't have to do so much getting up and getting down but it is doable by yourself. So I have everything connected here. I'm gonna go ahead and connect everything back in so my car looks normal again. And then we'll go into the stick on portion of this and how it's gonna look and what you may need to do if you're doing this on a Corvette or if you have a more of a curved wind, uh, curved window. So let me go ahead and get this back together and I'll be right back with you guys. Okay guys, everything's put back together. Everything's tucked back in, um, unnoticeable. And just from hitting my open button here, you can see that it flashes through, just kind of uh, sits there while the brake lights are on. So it's fully functional, guys. I think it's going to look sweet once I put it up. So now that we know that's working, let's go ahead and tack it up. So again, this is where we're going to be you know, applying it. And like I said earlier, I'm going to be applying it on the upper lip. I'm not gonna film this process just because this is gonna be more of a universal style thing where you're gonna have to do it on your own and I'm gonna have to get up in this trunk and it's gonna be impossible for me to be like in the camera doing it. So I'm going to, again, apply my adhesive promoter, which is, it's really just kind of a cleaner and it allows it to tack better, probably has some alcohol in it, to where I'm gonna be mounting this thing to and then I'm gonna mount it up, guys. So. I'll be right back with you. If I have any more tips or anything, I'll be dropping them in right before. I'm gonna make sure that this goes as smoothly as possible and I'm gonna give you the best information I can while you're tacking this thing up. So guys, I got it up there now. Now, I'm going to say this 
You can do it any way that works for your car. In this case, on the Corvette, where I'm putting it, the adhesion is actually on top of that strip right there. So you're desi it's designed to stick to it like that. I flipped it down and actually glued the back of it to that because I'll show you why here. With it being up like that and how the curve is on the trunk, it wouldn't bead and be as bright as it is like this. So I have 5% tints on the rear. And with the light of my garage, you can already barely see it, but it's almost similar to the headlights at least. So in the daylight, when you actually push the brake, this is me just like pushing the unlock button to flash the lights. You can see it a lot better. Now before when it was up, I didn't even get a video of it because I stuck it up there and I just was so unhappy with that look. I just flipped it back down. And now I love the look a lot better. It looks a ton better. So again, just popping the trunk here to show you. If you guys want to use that adhesion that's right there above the little LEDs, you can. But in the Corvette's case and the curve of the window and how it sits, it wasn't the right look. So I just went ahead and glued it. So little tip there, take it how you want and do what you want with it. Again, this is more of the user part of the video where you guys are going to be doing it and placing it wherever you'd like. So that's what I did. That's how I made it look better on this car and maybe other hatchback style vehicles that have a more of a curved sloping trunk like this or a um, back window, I should say. Um, you can do that setup as well. So I'm loving it now. So everything's pretty much operating like it should. I'm just going to tuck my wires up a little better um, and then we'll go ahead and get some night clips of it. The install portion was uh, out of 10, I would say probably about a five or a six, just because you're going to have to do a lot of wire running and splicing. Um, but if you know how to do that, then it's extremely easy, guys, extremely easy. And again, this is for any car and the setup that I did with the glue and whatnot, that's just for my setup with my Corvette, just because I don't like the way it looked with the the adhesion being on the top and a, only a little bit of it showing. And it just didn't go right with the 5% tint. So the way I have it now, it looks a lot better. Um, I hope you liked the clip with it in the garage and I hope you like the clip with it outside as well. So um, again, it's one of those things for 25 bucks. It's a great deal. It looks good. It's not something that's gonna be $200 quality, but it is still really worth the money, guys. I think it looks great. I think it's a great addition. And if you have less tint, it might even look better. So don't judge the quality of the lighting off of my 5% tints. Judge it off of your, you know, your car or other videos you may have seen. Um, again, the darkness is not going to give the purest quality. But again, at the nighttime, you could see it a lot better. And I think it's still really cool. It's extremely noticeable. You're not going to not notice it. And it's just that extra little touch that looks really nice, especially when you push the brake and it gives you that extra flash. The hazards look pretty cool. Out of 10, I would give it a solid nine slash, nah, I'm gonna give it about an eight. I think an eight is a good rating for it because it 
Doesn't come with instructions like I think it really should. But other than that, it's still pretty, you know, self-explanatory. And the lighting and the adhesiveness to me should have been a little bit better, but you can't complain again for 20 bucks. So that's just me. I'm also judging off my tents, like I told you guys not to. So I wish you would admit a little bit more out of the tents, but that's just me. So awesome product though, still guys. Pretty easy install, it took me a solid hour and a half to do, I would say, just because I had to go run and get the glue. I'm filming, yada, yada, yada. So give yourself about 45 minutes and you can get this job done. It's a lot easier with the two-door coupe because I had to run the wires to the positive and negative. But you may not have to do that. If you got um, an amp back there, that will be your positive and negative. You could just run it from the 12 volt and the ground from your amp, you know, the red and black, and boom, you're good. So if you had an amp or if I had an amp, it would have saved me a ton of time having to run from the battery. So probably when the time comes, I do do subwoofers back here. I'm gonna transfer, take out those battery, those wires I have from my battery, throw them on my amp and boom, we're good. So that's another awesome thing. If you guys do have an amp, it makes it a lot easier. So with that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're a first time viewer of my channel, thank you so much for checking out this video. Thank you so much for sticking through it. And I hope it really helped you guys. Check out some of my other content. I'm trying to get more into the universal content world, but for right now, I do have a lot of 200 content, which, hey, that's not bad either. So I'm gonna be building on the Corvette as well. But this right here is one of the universal products. And again, guys, if you haven't already seen from the beginning, make sure if you do pick this product up to use my moderate mods discount code to get 10% off of this purchase. And um, yeah, what, what's wrong with that? You know, save yourself a couple bucks. And if you ever need anything, always, always, always comment down below. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know how you felt. Let me know if you have questions. IG message me, whatever you want. I'm always here, guys. And until the next video, peace. Oh,